was born in Leon, but my parents sent me very early in 1955, actually, to um, a boarding school, a Jesuit boarding school in the middle of Castile, in Carrion de los Condes, of all places. And there I stayed until the school was moved to Leon, and then I studied for two years in Salamanca. The so-called, back then it was called the Comunes, which means the courses that are common to all branches of philosophy and letters. Um, and um, after the Comunes, I moved to Madrid to the Complutense, and I completed my studies there in uh, Romance languages and literatures. Once I finished the military service, I didn't see any way out in Spain. And another reason is because I didn't feel well prepared for anything really, any serious uh, undertaking in my career. So I applied to several universities in the US. Princeton responded and offered me um, a small fellowship and a teaching salary. So in 1972, I went to Princeton I did my PhD, I finished my uh, thesis, and uh, I was offered a job as an assistant professor. And I accepted, um, so I never, I did go to the MLA, but I never had to follow through because uh, I was given a, a job right then and there in Princeton. And um, I stayed in Princeton until 1988. So I went through the whole um, uh, Scalafon, the, the, the whole uh, career in Princeton. I was first assistant professor, then associate professor. I don't remember when I became associate professor, and then full professor. I was invited to go to Harvard um, and give um, one lecture or two, I don't remember now, as part of a um, search that they had for a professor. The great figures had either died, like Stephen Gilman, or retired, like Marichal. So the department was quite depleted at the time. And they wanted somebody mid-career. I was 41, 42 already, when I, 42 already when I went to Harvard. And there I stayed for the rest of my career. The task they gave me was quite daunting at the beginning because they wanted me to reconstruct the department, the Spanish section. So they told me, okay, you have to make this happen and um, build an entire Spanish section. And so I did, uh, more or less with the help of a couple of other people in there, one person in Portuguese and the one senior figure in Spanish who was Marquet Villanueva. And um, I think we did a pretty good job. Then I was named chairman there, yet again with another task, which was to reconstruct the, the French section as well and the Italian section. So I've spent half of my career in searches of this kind, which was very time consuming, but at the same time, I got to know a lot of really very influential, very, um, uh, very talented figures, people. So that went on and on, and I retired in 2016. So it must have been Sylvia Molloy, who had been my professor at Princeton, and a very influential one. I mean, she turned around my life, virtually, in my intellectual life, that is. And um, so when she invited me to go to NYU for a semester as a visiting professor, I grabbed that opportunity. I asked for a leave of absence from Harvard for a semester, and um, I went to NYU. It was a very different experience from Harvard, and one I'm very grateful for, because otherwise I wouldn't have known anything beyond Princeton and Harvard. Actually, I don't know anything beyond Princeton and Harvard except for what I learned at NYU. And um, it was an, an extraordinary experience in every regard. Uh, my future wife decided that we had to take advantage of the city, of being in New York. So we got a subscription to the opera and we went to a number of concerts. She used to visit me every weekend or so. And um, 
that was part of the experience, and that was a very great experience. For me, it was paradise. I adored New York, and living really in the heart of, of the village was magnificent. Besides that, the experience in the department itself was really special, as I just mentioned. It gave me another perspective. The students at NYU were uh, very different from Harvard students, from Princeton students. These were students that were very, um, very eager to learn, but at the same time, they were questioning everything that the professor had to say. So I had to adjust to that. I wasn't used to being questioned um, that way, question like um, challenging questions uh, regarding my ideas, my uh, uh, way of teaching, and everything else. So I had to open up and let that um, questioning, that challenging sink in and um, adjust. Uh, and that was really excellent, really magnificent. I taught two courses. One was mostly uh, Galdós and the novel. The other one was about theory. Uh, the one on theory had, I had fewer students, but also very challenging. They were ahead of me, actually, in terms of, they were very uh, alert to whatever was happening in, in literary theory. And there were certain things that I didn't even know because I was very focused on, on uh, the post-structuralism, structuralism and, and post-structuralism. And, and they were far ahead of me in other areas, uh, cultural studies, for example, which was, which was just beginning and was very potent at NYU at the time, not so much at Harvard. Um, so that was a very uh, formidable experience in terms of my own learning. I had to learn very quickly because those students wanted more than I could offer them. Um, the other course was perhaps even more interesting because we could have a dialogue, um, very sophisticated dialogue and very intense dialogue. Those students wouldn't just respond and so No, there, there was a whole polemic all the time going on, a whole debate going on between them, uh, between them and myself, and, uh, or among them and between them and myself. And that was very, very fruitful. Galdós course was a graduate course. And I had, you know, a room like this full of students. It, it was very, I was very impressed. Harvard, we had four every year at most, five at most, very rarely up to eight, I seem to remember at some point. But you seem to have like uh, dozens of students all together there. And um, so both in my personal life and in my uh, professional life, it was really an extraordinary experience, really fantastic. Everybody was very generous with me. And there was um, the faculty as well. They were all very helpful very good interlocutors, and um, a fantastic thing. And it was very good for me to get out of Harvard for a while. I remember going to the public library, the big public library in 41st and uh, 5th, and I loved that library. I loved it then, and I love it now. It's really, I mean, going there is such a joy in that huge, immense reading room. I always like to be up to date, especially in photography what was going on. So I would be studying, writing, preparing my classes in my apartment. And then I realized that within five minutes from the apartment, I could go and visit a gallery in Soho. And um, maybe not every day, but certainly every week, and often more than once a week, I would just take a break when I was tired or something. And I would walk down to Soho Five minutes away, there were, there were dozens of galleries there showing the latest in art in New York. And um, that was my learning, another learning experience in New York. When I was there is when I bought my first professional camera, which was still an analog camera. I did mostly street photography, I suppose, back then buildings, 
people in the streets. I was at the center three or four times. The first time around um, was a large congress, a large symposium, on mostly on literary theory. And we were all there. Um, everybody I know in the, in the field, in the, in the profession, actually, in the, in the you know, Hispanic side of the profession, everybody was there. That was a great experience. And it, um, some really important debates took place there, I remember. Particularly a debate, I, I recommended some people from Spain who went there, like Luis Beltran Almería. He was back then starting his career. Now he has like a dozen books published on literary theory. He likes to call it aesthetics of the novel. He was there, and that was in the field a very decisive moment. Moreiras was there, for example, who then had a very large impact in the profession from Duke and after Duke and so on. Noel Vallis was there from, from Yale. Uh, Brad Epps was there as well. Jim Mandrell was there as well. And we had some serious debate, but there were those of us who were trying to, um, for good or bad, trying to challenge the um, Spanish from Spain view of um, uh, literary analysis or literary criticism or literary theory, if you will. And we were trying to challenge that. And I remember well my, my presentation, which was precisely about that, about what I thought back then, maybe now I would do, write something different, but what I thought back then that was wrong with the Spanish approach wrong or at least outdated and was in, in you know, really uh, in meaning serious need of up, upgrading or, or refurbishing altogether. And um, I remember Luis Beltran was behind me in that thing. And then our, uh, our presentations were published in Spain in a magazine called Chimera, which was then at the cutting edge of the, of the profession, or wanted to be. And um, I remember it, you know, it, it wasn't a big deal. It was a very simple, um, short uh, presentation. But still, it did create some debate in, within Spain, even. Um, the second time, it was a lecture in another context, and I forget what my lecture was about. Maybe Torres Villarroel, maybe uh, Galdós, I forget. Uh, but then there was a second small symposium revisiting that previous one, which had been so successful, with uh, Eduardo Subirats. And that's when Eduardo Subirats went head on against the entire system of the American University. I mean, she took it on like it was something like a card castle, whatever the name is. and. Um, we had a very difficult moment, you may remember. But at the same time, it was very productive because in many ways, Eduardo Subirat was right, except that his approach was just pure demolition. Although at the same time, he said that our presentations were far more radical than his in terms of the way we were challenging the systems. So yes, I do have extraordinary memories, not only of the times I visited the, the foundation, but of the very influential events that took place there. At least, as far as I remember, they were extremely influential in the profession and um, generated a number of polemics that, um, if they are not remembered, they should be remembered, because the whole problem right now with the humanities and with the departments of literature was already clear there, was already um, giving signs of danger so to speak, at, that, at the foundation, at the Fundación Juan Carlos. That's how far my memories go right now. Thank you for all those great opportunities at NYU, first in the chair, but then uh, in the Juan Carlos chair, but then uh, the foundation. I have 
given dozens of lectures everywhere. I have forgotten most of them, no, not the ones at NYU, because those were given a very special context and they were really transcendental. Not because they were good lectures, but because of the context that we were given in. So thank you.